Uh, this is Andrew with Zocomo TV. My mission is simple, to educate and inspire people to have more life in their lives. And on the phone, we have Susan from Beast Mode Silkworms. Um, so Susan, <laughs> uh, could you tell us a little bit about Beast Mode and how you started raising silkworms? Sure. Um, I about two years ago, I had gotten I had gotten my first uh, chameleon, mm -hmm. Roy, and um, I once I found out how nutritious silkworms were, and they could replace crickets because I hate crickets. <laughs> Yeah. I um <laughs> I went to go look to buy them and there was none to be found. Wow. So um so when I looked I saw that they were sold eggs and I kinda did a little research and uh to try to raise the hatch and raise the eggs on my own. And the first three times, um the first two times actually I failed miserably. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All the silkworms died and um so I just I I tried it I'm like I'll give it one more go and if I can't make this work and I reached out to some people that um that had raised that I knew who had had raised them successfully mm -hmm. and just asked them for and they, they were actually in Europe and because uh, they're a, a very prevalent over there in Europe and um oh. as opposed to here and um so I reached out to to a person in Europe who raised them successfully and sold them and uh, asked him for his advice, and he told me how to do it. So I'm like, okay, I'll give this one more try. And then I, I uh, bought the eggs, and then I, I was successful. And then once people started mm -hmm. hearing that I had silkworms, I started getting flooded by, um, by uh, um, requests to buy them. So, Got it. And, then, and then, so then I... From there, I form beast mode silkworms, and uh, the rest is history. That's exciting. Um, so, for, the, for a lot of people who aren't familiar with silkworms, I think you said they only eat mulberry leaves. Is that? Um, yes. Yes. Uh, silkworms um, only thrive on mulberry leaves. They can eat. Like I do feed them carrot in a pinch when I'm out of food. Mm -hmm. They'll only they won't last more than like two weeks and then they'll die. Wow. Um, eating carrot, but um, the only food their only staple that they eat is mulberry leaves. Got yeah. it. Got it. Um, so what? So what basically is a silkworm? So like why? Why do you think it, they're so popular in Europe and not here in the U.S. where we have a bunch of crickets and roaches? <laughs> Silkworms. Um, because um, they eat mulberry leaves, um, the mulberry leaves are not available all year round. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why I think they're they're um, they're not as popular here. Is because during the winter months you have to feed them silkworm chow. Mm -hmm. So and it is quite a bit more expensive than free leaves off a tree. Right. Um, to feed them, the chow is pretty expensive, but um, the um, the silkworm itself is um, a, the pupae of a bomb, Bombex mori moth, silk moth. Okay. And um, they're the actual, um, the silk that they spin their cocoon out of is actually what's used to make clothes. Right. Clothes. Okay. So, um, like in, in the, um, in like tai, Taiwan and and China and Japan, they're really big um, uh, sericulture. Sericulture is um, the process of raising silkworms to cultivate the silk. Mm -hmm. And um, so they're, they're, it's really big out, out there. And that's why, you know, like in Europe and um, in Asia, that's why I think that they're more prevalent over there than they are here. Got it. And I think, if I remember right, you were telling me that silkworms, they've been so heavily domesticated they can't survive in the wild? Yes. You will not find, you will find other species of of the, of a type of silkworm, like a caterpillar, mm -hmm. um, a type of silkworm, but it's not, not the Bombyx mori. The Bombyx mori are the... Um, are only domesticated and they only survive in captivity. Wow, that's pretty interesting. Um, 
So you started beast mode a couple of years ago. Is that about how long you've been feeding it to your reptiles or has it been a little bit longer? Uh, no, that's that's pretty much <laughs> how how long I've been feeding them to my to my reptiles, and uh, and they love them. I have I have a wide variety of species <laughs> of reptiles, and they all eat silkworms. So. That's exciting. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. <clears throat> um, so for the the average hobbyist, why would you recommend they look for silkworms over other types of feeder insects like crickets or the superworms or the roaches? The um, silkworms are a very high source of calcium. Uh, they also have, they're also high in protein, iron, magnesium, sodium, vitamin B1, B2, and B3. Um, also, the um, enzyme that they use to digest the toxic mulberry leaf is uh, called serapeptase, okay. which is... Um, it's an excellent anti-inflammatory and pain reliever, mm-hmm. um, and it also um, aids in calcium absorption. Oh. Um, and because of their high calcium content, silkworms are great for like gravid females and um, and the the reptiles in general. Got it. And then I noticed. And, oh, what was that? Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say they. Um, and also because they're soft-bodied, they don't cause impaction. Like superworms um, have chitlin, mm-hmm. which is the um, the hard the hard body um, chitin ch- chitin. <laughs> yeah, like the- yeah. Um, and it, but silkworms don't have that. So nice. Well, that's one thing I noticed because um, you you sent us a a box to Aquascape and. Um, since I was feeding some of the fish, I was watching them eat it, and I was like, "Well, wait a second; these are soft worms, so they're like there's very little reason to worry about impaction and stuff." So that's that's pretty interesting. Yes, yeah, they're they're great; they're great feeders. Okay. Um, so one thing I was curious on, and you kind of touched on it already, but like. Are supplements for calcium or multivitamins like herptivite, are they necessary when people are feeding silkworms or do they still need a supplement with those type of things? Um, usually um, people, like I don't supplement, I don't dust the silkworms because they are so high in calcium. Mm-hmm. But I do, when I do give him his, um, his bi-monthly vitamin, um, my my panther chameleon. When I do give him his his bi monthly vitamin, I do dust that vitamin because I know he'll eat it. Got it. <laughs> Versus like other feeders, he may like not, but he just loves silkworm, so I know that he will get his his uh, his bi monthly D three and bi- and uh, general vitamins by through eating the silkworm. So that's the otherwise I don't daily dust them with the calcium when I feed them. Got it. That's pretty interesting because I know for like some people, and even though it's not that expensive, supplementing with calcium is kind of a, a concern for them. Um, so that's exciting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then another thing for people, because I know a lot of people, they like to raise their own, like they like to breed roaches or try to breed crickets on their own. If someone tried to do that with silkworms, what kind of maintenance would they have after purchasing them? Like do they have to clean up any waste or they just kind of let it let it go um pretty much like um from my experience i i'm pretty much hands off with my silkworms once they hatch i just feed them and i kind of just keep feeding them a little at a time and pretty much hands off their waste does not kill them like i know that um that crickets and uh cockroaches have their waste has an adverse effect and it could poison them. Okay. Um, but silkworm waste is is uh, perfectly fine. It does not affect them at all. So I pretty much leave them alone for like the first three weeks of their life, mm-hmm. and then and then I start when I start cleaning the bins after they they get a little bit bigger, then um, then I'll only clean the bins like um, free and clean them free of their waste probably like once a week. Okay, so not not too much maintenance. That's nice. Right. And you don't really have to worry about them dying all the time because I know crickets. Some people have very low success rate with crickets. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, I, and um, okay, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, like, the only thing I think I noticed when I got the package you sent us was um, 
that's how Aquascape was at. You just have to set up the mesh, those mesh things upright so that the silkworms don't like suffocate underneath them. I think that was the only thing I noticed. Yes, yeah. Um, what I do recommend is when, when um, and I have a video out um, on Facebook, and I'm going to be in the process of creating videos for YouTube on care, catching care and raising and feeding tips um, to be successful for um, the regular keeper if they were interested in doing so. Um, it is a lot of work, but mm -hmm. um, but I do have a I do have a video out there that um, that kind of instructs the, the keeper on what to do right when the silkworms come in, and um, that's one of the things is to to lift off the mesh that I ship them with so that um, and and the the biggest thing that keepers the biggest mistake is they cover them right and uh, that will kill them <laughs> because it. The food has so much moisture in it, the chow, mm -hmm. and um, it creates the condensation, and any condensation or humidity will kill the silkworms. Awesome. I'll make sure to overlay a picture that you have on your website so people know kind of what we're talking about. Yeah. Um, so I think this is kind of like the last question I had for you. Um, what are some online resources that you have for hobbyists to reference to if they want to get more into silkworms? I know you've talked about Facebook. And you're going to start your YouTube series. What what else do you have for hobbyists to learn more about silkworms? Um, there's uh, the 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 two main companies have a lot of information on their website. And one is CoastalSilkworms.com, mm -hmm. and then the other one is MulberryFarms.com for um, for silkworms. And then you know, of course, once I get my care and raising tips, and then I have a lot of people that message me. They can message me through um, through Facebook, Beast Mood on Facebook. Beast Mode on Instagram, mm -hmm. um, even on YouTube, they can message me, and I walk people through all the time on how to um, to care for them and raise them if they were interested. Excellent. And then you're, if I remember correctly, you're trying to wholesale to different retailers. Um, is that correct, or am I remembering you correctly? Yeah, yeah, no, no, that is my goal. Um, is uh, what I usually do. Um, I do sell to the to the keep to the regular keeper, my prices are very low oh, okay. because of the quantity because of the quantity that I that I raise and um and ship them out. But I do wholesale. Um my goal is to have silkworms more widely available in the United States. They can't be shipped out of the country, so they can only be shipped within the United States. Got and it. Uh, to have them more readily available just for the health of all the reptiles out there, and mm -hmm. a lot of people don't know about them because nobody has them, like, all year round. Right. That's and, very um, exciting. Yeah, so that would that would be my goal is to, um, to have people start raising them and selling them because I pretty much, when I, whatever I hatch and, and um, whatever eggs I hatch the amount, I always sell out. So the more that people have them available to sell, the more well known they would be and and um and people there i've 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 shipped them out to to keepers who have babies um baby chameleons and baby reptiles that um are kind of finicky and hard to feed mm -hmm. and um to thrive and um and they do great on silkworms so i don't know of any official scientific research um that that promotes that that will show the benefit of silkworms, but I know that there's a benefit because mm -hmm. I have so many people with um with um ill reptiles and stuff that come to me, and then I'll I'll ship them out silkworms, and they just say how much better they do being on a silkworm diet than on a cricket diet. Got it. Yeah, it sounds exciting the potential that they have for the hobby because of their high nutrition value. Um. So that's, I'm very excited for what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's that's pretty much it on my end. Did you have any final words you wanted to say for any viewers on silkworms and what they're going to do for the reptile hobby? Um, just if anybody is interested in uh, learning how to raise them uh, before I get my YouTube videos out or if they have any questions, please feel free to reach me. Um, you know, on face, like I said, on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, um, okay. 
you can reach me and ask me any questions, and I, I'm always here. <laughs> awesome. And then for those of you who are watching, to make it easy, I'll just I'll put the links down in the description below. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Susan, and thank you for your time.